Chapter 9, Infiltration, Recruitment, and Conditioning. It goes without saying, of course, that the New Age movement and its leadership cannot launch its hoped-for Age of Aquarius and install its Christ until and unless there is a substantial portion of the population conditioned to accept him. As might logically be expected then, there has been a well-orchestrated propaganda drive aimed at conditioning the public into acceptance of a new world order. The patterns that have actually been followed or paralleled by the New Age movement were set forth by Alice A. Bailey and H. G. Wells. <clears throat> According to Alice Bailey, the general public was to be familiarized with the concept of a hierarchy. In 1946, she instructed the New Age disciples that the conditioning should emphasize the following the evolution of humanity with particular attention to its goal of perfection. Number two, relation of the individual soul to all souls, doctrine of unity or interdependence of all life. Number three, the belief in a spiritual hierarchy will then be deduced as a result of a belief in the previous two goals and the normality of its existence emphasized. Along with this, it will be taught that the kingdom has always been present but, un but unrecognized due to the relatively few people who express it, who express as yet its quality. Number four, after the first three teachings have taken effect and the recognition of them has become general, then it will be emphasized that there are those among us who have already reached a goal of soul control which means possession. The foregoing scheme set forth in the externalization of the hierarchy was also to include a gradual inculcation of the idea of the bodily presence among us of the so-called masters. This idea was in its turn to be followed by, of course, a recognition that one lucky individual in the world had achieved total evolutionary process, i.e. the Christ consciousness, and that individual would serve as head of the hierarchy, as director of the kingdom of God on earth. Other things were to be taught to prepare the world for the new age and the new age Christ as well. Mind control and meditation were to be taught. Color therapy was to be emphasized. Music therapy and holistic health were additional items to be added to this eclectic diet for a new age. New age symbols such as the rainbow, Pegasus, the unicorn, pause, the unicorn. Anyone out there with children, especially daughters or little girls or granddaughters, might well know that it is nearly impossible to find clothing or other things that do not have unicorns on them. I go out of my way to avoid unicorns. My granddaughter now knows if she sees a pair of shoes with a unicorn on, she's like, no, nope, it has a unicorn on it. Yay. Unpause. Sorry. New age symbols. Okay. The unicorn, the all-seeing eye of Freemasonry, and triple sixes were to be increasingly displayed. The movement was to keep a low profile until 1975. Then it had permission to take everything public, including the very fact and nature of the plan itself. Everything hidden was to be revealed, and there was to be a no-holds-barred propaganda drive at that time spreading the previously esoteric teachings of the New Age along with the anticipation of a New Age Christ by every media vehicle available. However, even before 1975, the stage had been carefully set. Pause. I'm going to pause again. Everything hidden was to be revealed, okay? That is also a lot of the truther movement and conspiracy theory stuff, which I will say a lot of them are historically accurate, but the idea of it being revealed 
on purpose. There is a reason for that. Okay, unpause. Not coincidentally, following marching orders set forth by H.G. Wells in his The Open Conspiracy, Blueprints for a World Revolution, the movement worked in alliance with all sorts of movements and people. The movement handled those acti these activities carefully so as to avoid taking fundamentalists and other religious orthodox adherents into its confidence on the peculi peculiarly occult nature of the underlying esoteric blueprints for the movement. According to Wells, the first overt act of this open conspiracy was to be the putting upon record of its members reservation of themselves from any or all of the military obligations. The rationale behind this maneuver was to be that this would supply the practical incentive to bring many of the open conspiracy sympathizers together in the first place. This would also bring the conspiracy out of the realm of the theoretical and mystical and put into the field of practical conflict. Next, the conspiracy was to involve a skeptical and destructive criticism of personal immortality religions. Strangely enough, communism was to be destroyed at the same time. However, the New Agers feel the program they are offering the world would satisfy the basic desire of communists in that it proposes a form of worldwide socialism. The existing communist formula, per se, were to be abolished because they called for a dictatorship of the proletariat, and the New Agers slash open, cons open conspiracy people were more interested in a dictatorship of the hierarchy headed by Maitreya the Christ. Those appearing suitable to the open conspirators were to be indoctrinated into a study of the general concepts of the overall conspiracy, similar to the system of initiates, adepts, and masters that existed in all of occultdom, including the Nazi regime. The conspiracy was to be carried out by a wide variety of groups varying much in leisure knowledge, ability, and scope. This advice has, of course, been followed by the New Age movement, which indeed has something of interest to nearly everybody except for the Orthodox Christians and Jews from those groups. At the same time, it has managed to recruit willing workers by appealing to the instincts, instincts related to problems of world hunger. Discussion groups were also to be formed, out of which were to come circles of intelligentsia. These would supply lecturers and leaders of discussions. They would in turn be used and draw on still other organizations, not in and of themselves part of the scheme. Thus indoctrinating the members of those organizations in these new age or open conspiracy concepts. Out of these discussion groups, was to come a combining process in which the groups would unite for local and regional meetings. It was expected that those gatherings for the ad hoc activities would meet on a social basis as well and that this would also further the aims of the conspiracy. Independent initiatives were also to be encouraged as long as they advocated the provisional nature of existing governments. They resolved to establish a world economic system, replacement of private ownership of credit, transport and staple production with ownership by a world directorate, a recognition of biological controls on a worldwide basis of population and disease, a minimum st standard of freedom and welfare throughout the world, and a duty of subordinating personal life to that of a world directorate. It's, pause. It's just very interesting because we can see now this was written in the early, this is like 40 years ago, this book. And now we can see how some of these things have been implemented and are on the horizon, etc. Unpause. One has only to look at the guidelines for planetary initiative for the world we choose to see that Wells' directions and warnings were heeded. 
One only needs to look at the history of the world, particularly the United States in the wake of the Vietnam disturbances, to see the origins of the present New Age movement in its modern form. As the esoteric groups enjoyed the addition of mass support working on an ad hoc basis with them on peace and disarmament issues. There's other evidence that Wells was an insider and that the present structure is no coincidence. The first clue that one investigating the movement should look for in Wells' writings comes from the Aquarian Conspiracy. Wells is mentioned in that work as an author of importance in at least three places. A more important clue comes from the presses of Lucius Trust with its subsidiary Lucius Publishing Company. In their official organ, The Beacon, on page 310 of the May-June edition of 1977, appears an article entitled, H.G. Wells, A Forerunner. The writer of that article accurately stated that, Quote, few did more to incite revolt against Christian dogma or against the accepted codes of behavior. Unquote. Now, as Planetary Initiative rushes towards its hoped for, for June 21, 1983 completion date with surrounding celebrations and the convening of the World Council of Wise Persons ooh, in New York City, Wells' influence continues to linger and even expand. The New Age movement, including Planetary Initiative, is organized as Wells wished. Quote, As consisting of a great multitude and variety of overlapping groups, but now all organized for collective, political, social, and educational as well as propagandist action, they will recognize each other much more clearly than they did at first, and they will have acquired a common name. They have acquired a common name, the New Age Movement, and more than a name, they have acquired a common character, as Wells so accurately predicted. Quote, The character of the open conspiracy will now be plainly displayed. It will have become a great world movement, as widespread and evident as socialism or communism. It will largely have taken place of these movements. It will be more. It will be a world religion. The large, loose, assimilatory mass of groups and societies will be definitely and obviously attempting to swallow up the entire population of the world and become the new human community, unquote. Oh, don't you see it swallowing up the entire population of the world right now? I do. Sorry, that was me. <sighs> the character is accurately and plainly displayed. Will we wake up in time to see it for what it really is? Recruiting methods. Besides the broad operating principles of the New Age movement as set forth in the Alice Bailey slash H.G. Wells writings, there are specific tactics used by its adherents as a means to swell their ranks. The ideas of the movement are set forth in books on every topic imaginable. These books will, will usually stress that the world is a manifestation of thought to be controlled by one's own mind. Meditation is encouraged in books ranging from natural food cookbooks to cures for depression. Pause again. You will see this a lot in um, like entrepreneur um, podcasts and motivational speakers and stuff about being an entrepreneur. Uh, I used to hear a lot of that kind of stuff in um, like real estate investment podcasts and stuff like that. And they would always recommend Napoleon Hill and all that. Very much. Unpause. Sorry. Even Christian bookstores have not escaped the deceptive influence of the New Age movement. There, the shelves <clears throat> groan under the weight of books that contain virtually every plank of the New Age movement, from meditation and positive possibility thinking to support for a new world order. They differ only from the standard textbooks of the New Age movement by being labeled Christian. 
The Christian books will usually proclaim the fact that we are engaged in a conspiracy to make the world better and better until the Lord returns. The same line used by supporters of the Antichrist or Lord Maitreya. Away from the bookstores, the recruiting of unsuspecting self-improvers continues. People are encouraged to study one of the dozens of psychotechnologies, visualization, auto-suggestion, hypnotherapy, guided imagery, techniques almost guaranteed to bring one in contact with spirit guides, i.e. demons. Silva Mind Control, EST, A Course in Miracles, as well as several other mind science courses are virtually guaranteed to convert participants into New Agers. More shocking still is the fact that some, in some cases, these courses are being attended and even run, and I'm sorry, and even taught by both Protestant and Catholic clergy, clergy and nuns. In the city of Detroit, for example, a Roman Catholic priest and a nun are co-teaching a Silva mind control course. An Episcopalian church in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, has sponsored a holistic health center. The Cathedral of St. John the Divine Episcopal, New York City, has even featured sermons by David Spangler. The, ugh, the same David Spangler who has said that Luciferic initiation would be required to enter the new age. Of course, the reach out efforts of unity and Unitarians continue to increase in momentum. Unity and the Unitarian church alike reach out to singles, newly divorced, the depressed, the overweight, alcoholics, and others searching for themselves and their identities. Urban dwellers are reached by appeals from these churches to their sense of community. Come as you are, potluck dinners and dances for singles are often featured. Mind control courses and seminars on books such as Wayne Dyer's are offered for the insecure. They offer many of these people a sense of acceptance for the first time in their lonely, frightened lives. It's so sad. Unfortunately, these churches offer options that are scripturally unsound, teaching people that they can control the creative powers of God themselves and experience endless reincarnations. The social settings they offer may be a temporary palliative for their disease of loneliness, but are hard, hardly guarantees of long-term spiritual peace and salvation. Likewise, health food stores and juice bars often are turned into new age recruiting centers. Once again, they are filling the vacuum for a place where one may mingle and converse without having to resort to alcoholic beverages. In mental hospitals throughout the country, new agers have instituted their programs. They call for implementation of meditation, transpersonal psychology, biofeedback, which encourages the use of Zen and meditation to maintain alpha waves, and music meditation. They are all psychotechnologies, techniques nearly guaranteed to bring one under a state of possession or at least a loss of control that would enhance the chances of being possessed. In one state, those so foolish as to protest or resist the implementation of these plans, which amounted to little more than an establishment of religion by the state, were transfer transferred or removed. The psychologist who suggested the implementation of the New Age techniques in the first place was subsequently promoted to a state board position. He now is able to demand that all state institutions feature these techniques, which are part and parcel of the New World religion, planned by those seeking the New Aquarian Age. Drugs, too, are a way to draft soldiers into the New Age army of the Age of Aquarius. Mind-altering drugs advocated by the vanguard of the movement, Timothy Leary, pause. Timothy Leary was a follower of Aleister Crowley, so he's completely satanic. Okay, Timothy Leary, are not considered a blight to our society by the spokespeople for the New Age. Instead, they are tools for transformation. According to Marilyn Ferguson in her New Age classic, The, Aqu the Aquarian Conspiracy, quote, it is impossible to overestimate the historic role of psychedelics as an entry point drawing people into other transformative technologies. For tens of thousands of left-brained 
engineers, chemists, psychologists, and medical students who never before understood their more spontaneous, imaginative, right-brained brethren. The drugs were a pass to Xanadu, especially in the 1960s. Quote, the changes in brain chemistry triggered by psychedelics cause the familiar world to metamorphose. It gives way to rapid imagery, unaccustomed depths of visual perception and hearing, a flood of new knowledge that seems at once very old, a poignant primal memory. Those who ingested psychedelics f soon found that the historic accounts closest to their own experiences derived either from mystical literature or from the wonderland of theoretical physics, complementary views of the all and the void. As one chronicle, I'm sorry, as one chronicler of the 60s remarked, LSD gave a whole generation a religious experience, but chemical satori is perishable, its effects too overwhelming to integrate into everyday life. Non-drug psychotechnologies offer a controlled, sustained movement toward that spacious reality. The annals of the Aquarian conspiracy are full of accounts of passages. LSD to Zen, LSD to India, psilocybin to psychosynthesis. That's page 89 and 90 of the Aquarian conspiracy. So there you have it. The psychedelic drug explosion was an entry point for millions to the first initiation into the age of Aquarius. Again, this is consistent with the new age pattern of following the instructions set forth by Alice A. Bailey under dictation from the Tibetan master, Joao Kool. Illumination, quote, the higher and lower cities or powers are gained by incarnation or by drugs. Words of power, mantras, intense desire, or by meditation. Unquote. The Light of the Soul by Alice Bailey, page 377. In fairness to the New Agers as well as to Alice Bailey writings, the permanent use of the drugs is generally not encouraged. They are but a vehicle to initiate New Agers and prospective New Agers who are then encouraged to graduate to various forms of yoga such as transcendental meditation and other psycho technologies that lead to transcendental experiences. The mystical glue that binds the majority of those involved in the new age movement to each other. Pause. I'm going to insert that for um, the Christian world, um, the transcendental experiences is kind of, um, that would be, the Toronto Blessing and everything similar to that. That would be Bethel Church. That would be the Kundalini fire baptism electrocution and the tripping to heaven and the contemplative prayer and all that. They're doing that to the Christians, okay? That's how they're initiating them. mystical experiences. Incidentally, as noted elsewhere in this book, it is not without precedent to have government encouragement of these psychotechnologies. Neither is it without precedent for drugs to be used to obtain transcendental experiences. Hitler Hay tried both. He used mescaline to speed his path towards consciousness expansion, and his inner circle all experimented with psychotechnologies inducing a communal tripping of the light fantastic. New Age Infiltration of Government According to Marilyn Ferguson and other New Age writers, the government has long since been infiltrated by active New Age conspirators. In her public lectures, Miss Ferguson relates that she was even in invited to be the keynote speaker at the 1982 Department of Defense annual dinner. Her book freely relates that there are conspirators at the cabinet level, the White House staff, congressmen, at every level of government. According to her book, the National Institute of Mental Health, the Department of Health, Education and Welfare, and the Department 
of defense, not to mention the corruption of the grant writing process of the United States government to fund these quasi-religious, openly religious programs of the New Age movement, include Zen, Transcendental Meditation, and other psychotechnologies of every shade and description in their programs. In 1978, a Washington conference was held called Holistic Health, a Public Policy. This was, a co-sponsor, this was co-sponsored by several governmental agencies. While it is hard to object to the presence of politicians, physicians, and psychologists in attendance, nevertheless, one finds it hard to swallow the fact that sharing the speaker's platform were spiritual teachers, futurist, meditation teacher Jack Schwartz, and the avowed enemy of organized religion, Buckminster Fuller. As Barbara Marks Hubbard would call him, Bucky. Sorry, that was me. While the list of speakers may have been only half New Age, the list of topics was nearly 90% New Age. Topics dear to the heart of New Agers included implementation of holistic health centers, cross-cultural healing practices, holographic theory of mind and reality, yoga, music and consciousness, straight out of Alice Bailey's instructions that music therapy should be taught as part of the preparation for the New Age, acupuncture, acupressure, Buddhist meditative techniques, body work, biofeedback, guided imagery, and the changing image of man, the New Age Manifesto released by the Stanford Research Institute. Infiltration of Industry Government is not the only large American institution involved, invaded, I'm sorry, by the New Age conspirators. They have also called on the financial and social pressures of big business to attain their goals for world domination, a world to be peopled by those more schooled in mysticism than everyday common sense. Marilyn Ferguson reports in the Aquarian Conspiracy that they have managed to win the financial support of Lockheed Aircraft, Blue Cross Blue Shield, the Rockefeller Foundation, and others for holistic health forums. Again, while it is hard to argue that the case for organically grown vegetables and enough sleep at night, nevertheless, one may view the the agenda with justifiable concern if it sounds more like a catalog of New Age occultism than it does like a health improvement seminar. These programs have and continue to routinely feature the following, which are all nothing more than variations on Eastern occult techniques. Meditation, visualization, according to occultists, this is a shortcut to unlocking all the mysteries of mysticism. Biofeedback, of course, enhanced by meditation. Acupuncture, manipulation of the force or life force. Hypnosis, psychic healing, etc. And if this were not enough to gladden the hearts of New Agers everywhere, the latest news from the halls of industry should be. For suddenly courses in New Age thinking have become the order of the day, particularly for middle and upper level management personnel and salesmen. From General Motors and Chrysler Corporation through AT&T and Southwestern Oil, concerns such courses have been offered. One such course that has been in wide use at many major corporations is called New Age Thinking and is taught by Lou Tice of the Pacific Institute Incorporated. Employees attending these institutes are even encouraged to bring their entire families. Self-image psychology is stressed as part of a new mental toolkit. Like other psychotechnologies, the perceptions of the participants are played with in an attempt to shift their focus to new age thinking. Participants are basically taught that they create their own world by their own thought forms and that by ignoring or downplaying negative inputs, their world will become a brighter, better place. Of course, believing you are your own God is the next logical step. And where does such a program tell one to go for spiritual and religious guidance? Again, Dear to the heart of the most dedicated New Age psychic and spiritualist, they are sent to the major advocates of the deity of man, Pierre de de Teilhard de Chardin, Herman Hesse, Eric Fromm, 
Abraham Maslow, Carl Rogers, and most outrageously of all, Ram Das, an avowed eminent enemy of Orthodox Judeo-Christian religious tradition and proponent of a mass conversion to Hinduism and other forms of Eastern mysticism. Clearly enforced attendance at these New Age seminars is a form of religious discrimination by the employer that should not be tolerated. Neither should it be made a ground for promotion or demotion among those attending or refusing to attend. Could an employer demote or promote one for regularly attending mass or evangelical services? The answer, of course, is a clear no. Neither should the employer be allowed to do this to those whose conscious consciences do not permit their attendance at seminars promoting new age thinking astrology ah, entry point for the young and confused the public has been largely conditioned to accept the age of aquarius by widespread popular usage of astrology and astrologers what's your sign is a common icebreaker at parties and all too often even among christians Newspapers daily carry astrology columns and horoscope magazines are in abundant supply at every newsstand. This popular acceptance has conditioned the general public to believe that either there is something to it, or at worst, it's no more than a harmless pastime. However, those whose interests are piqued by reading an occasional accurate daily horoscope soon wish to know more. After exhausting the range of books available at the library and or general interest bookstore, the enthusiast has no choice but to move on to occult bookstores and astrology association meetings. There, if he hasn't already picked up on it, he is introduced to the coming age of light and love, the age of Aquarius. Of course, he is also told that this so-called new age will have to be preceded by a cleansing action. The euphemism we noted that Hitler Hay attached to his extermination of Jews, Gypsies, and Slavic peoples being more acquainted with astrological lore than with history, the would-be occult initiate fails to make the connection. The seeking person finds fun and acceptance at these meetings and the New Age bookstores, which usually turn out to be occult clubhouses of sorts. From these innocent starts, it is an easy next step into the political, religious, and social arms of the New Age movement. Hunger Projects, a New Age Ruse If the New Age movement cannot get you by appealing to your appetite for the mysterious and occult, then perhaps it can recruit you by appealing to your finest and best motives. This is where the Hunger Project, Bread for the World, and a host of other projects allegedly designed to alleviate the problems of world hunger fit into New Age plans. Of course, the systems usually recommend as viable options to end world hunger often sound remarkably like the system cited in Revelation chapter 13. Quote, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Revelation thirteen sixteen through eighteen KJV. Unfortunately, those attending introductory meetings of those, these organizations, which spend the majority, if not all, of their resources for lobbying to achieve a new world order, are never told what the real motive of the top leaders behind this trend actually is. Buckminster Fuller is a prime mover in the Hunger Project. He is also the founder of the World Game Laboratories and is slated to sit on Planetary Initiative's World Council of Wise Persons. The real motive for the creation of these gigantic global agencies is set forth on page 20 of his 1981 release, The Critical Path, St. Martin's Press, New York. Quote, Throughout the history of land and sea transport, those who have gained and held control of the world's lines of vital supply have done so only by becoming the masters in the game of establishing supreme human power 
over all other sub-powerful organizations, ergo invisib- invisibly over all humanity. Unquote. Emphasis in the original. The masters. Hmm. This is more than interesting because Fuller is closely affiliated with Donald Keyes of Planetary Initiative and Planetary Citizens. Keyes is an open follower of Alice Bailey and her Tibetan ma- mentor, Joao Kuhl. An invisible power by the masters is the goal of the plan of, world, of the world servers, launching the drive for planetization. Lucius Trust, the custodian of the Alice ba- Bailey writings, as already mentioned, was incorporated originally as the Lucifer Publishing Company. In 1924, they changed their name to the somewhat less obvious Lucius Trust. One of their subsidiaries is a World Goodwill. Many Christian groups have won endorsement from World Goodwill, including Bread for the World. The organization has freely lobbied for the creation of a new world order. One can only wonder what impact the same money spent lobbying for the system desired by the Lucius Trust slash planetary initiative people would have had if spent on starving children who needed real bread in their stomachs instead of using them as pawns in a political maneuver to create international megalithic structures capable of controlling the world a la Orwell's 1984. And that is the end of chapter 9. Thank you for listening. Wake up! Run. There's just one name that can keep you out of hell, and it's the name of Jesus! The name of Jesus!